this week in Jamaica now, Prime Minister strips Dr. Fenton Ferguson of the health portfolio as pressure peaks over his handling of the sector. Health audit report confirms grave conditions at public health facilities, how you could be affected. Resigned KPH official breaks silence on the dead baby scandal. It has placed Jamaica's chief medical officer on the defensive and anguish at the University of Technology after a medical student is murdered on her way home. The details of these and other stories coming up after the break. Tired of those old, boring calendars? Well, Sprint and Station Asafa Powell has some sexy photos for you to look at in 2015. I'm Damian Mitchell in this week for Carleen Brown and this is Jamaica Now. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller on Friday yielded to public pressure and relieved the Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson of the portfolio. It's the culmination of a series of health ministry failures, including the handling of the dead baby scandal. Come Monday, Fenton Ferguson will be the new Minister of Labor and Social Security. Horace Daly, the minister without portfolio in the finance ministry, will take over the health portfolio. Derek Kelly will keep the agriculture and fisheries portfolio. The Prime Minister said she has listened to the recent discussions and expressions of concern which could distract from the very focus on the economic and social reforms. She also said Jamaica must be united to ensure that the positive path that it has taken will not be disrupted in any way. Meanwhile, the opposition leader Andrew Holness says Ferguson's reassignment is not enough. According to Mr. Holness, the Prime Minister's actions shows a very high tolerance and patience with failure and underperformance which places the health and security of the people of Jamaica at risk. And the opposition spokesperson on health, Senator Marlene Malahu Fort, says apparently no one is being held accountable for the failings of the Ministry of Health. Senator Malahu Fort says Jamaica needs a different kind of leadership if it is to progress. And the reassignment of Dr. Ferguson coincided with the release of the highly anticipated report following the audit of Jamaica's health facilities. The audit found a litany of woes and unsanitary conditions at some of Jamaica's public health facilities. Leaking roofs, broken down doors, unsterile operating rooms, and poor garbage storage were only some of the problems highlighted. In addition, there were inadequate supplies of drugs. Disposal tubes and other items meant for single use were being reused. At the same time, staff at some facilities were found to have ignored sanitation practices, further exposing patients to infections. And this week, resigned Chief of Medical Staff at the University Hospital of the West Indies, Professor Trevor McCartney, broke his silence on the dead baby scandal, saying Chief Medical Officer Dr. Marion bullock Dacas was not telling the truth about when she was told of the second bacterial outbreak at the institution. Professor McCartney said on September 7, he wrote to Dr. bullock Dacas informing her that in June, there had been four cases of the serratia bacterial infection in the hospital's neonatal intensive care unit, but which was contained within days. He said in that same letter, he advised her of a subsequent Klebsiella bacterial outbreak, which was identified in late August, and the steps that were being taken to contain it. But one week ago, Dr. Ducas told a Jamaica House press briefing that the letter she received only spoke about the already contained serratia bacteria. One of them referred to letters, both written on June 25th, which spoke to an outbreak which took place on the 4th of June to the 15th of June of the racial marcenses. The other letter spoke of, was dated, had an attachment in August, and spoke of isolation of organisms between the 13th of August and the 21st of August. So the letters did not, the letters did not really speak to anything except saying attach signed enclosed letters, and none of what I have described was current on September 7th. Meanwhile, Professor McCartney says he resigned because the hospital's board was insistent that the medical staff should take the blame for the handling of the infectious outbreak. According to him, the board wanted to remove the pressure from the health ministry. The, the board wished the medical staff to have some part of their means, not, not so at all. They didn't ask for anything, but what they wanted is to remove the pressure from the Ministry of Health. So you're a sacrificial lamb? I don't know about that. I mean, I, I was not asked, you know, remember, I was not asked. I decided to be on my own volition. But couldn't that have conveyed culpability? That, that is why I am seeking to clear the air. 
In other news, there was intense anguish at the University of Technology Jamaica this week after a 22-year-old medical student was shot dead in Hope Pastures on her way home. The incident has prompted UTEC and the neighboring Mona campus of the University of the West Indies to review the safety and security measures for students who live in surrounding communities. Already, UTEC has announced a temporary shuttle system for students. The police say around 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening, Shanique Walters and a friend were walking home when a silver car drove up with two men aboard. One of them demanded their bags. It's reported that the friend complied, however Walters refused and instead ran off. That's when one of the robbers got out of the car and fired shots hitting her in the head. There was a testy exchange at the West Kingston Commission of Inquiry this week between Chairman Sir David Simmons and Deborah Martin, one of the attorneys for the Jamaica Constabulary Force. It followed a comment by Sir David that he was suspicious about the evidence from Superintendent Everton Tabana. The senior cop had testified that a Tivoli Gardens woman told him that men were killed in the community in 2010 after they demanded monies they were promised to defend drug kingpin Christopher Dudus Coke. If it is that you think it is I, unnecessary I, 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 because I, this I, is accepted... I'm, I'm suspicious of the evidence, let me tell you that. I'm suspicious of this evidence. Let him give it. Mr. Chairman, I'm alarmed that you find it Don't suspicious. Be I'm Don't very alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Let him that give the whatever evidence you want. Let him give whatever ev evidence you want. Mr. Chairman, I will, if it is at the end of the day you find it unnecessary, irrelevant, you have indicated that you find it we suspicious. Will make the appropriate findings. Sir David then asked the policeman to provide the woman's name and the address where the conversation took place, but the senior cop said he did not have the information. The debate on the Caribbean Court of Justice CCJ bills resumed in the Senate this week after being suspended following a two-day boycott by opposition senators. Only two of the eight opposition senators were in the upper house on Thursday when the debate resumed. Opposition and government senators have been at odds following the suspension of Marlene Malahu Fort two Fridays ago after she failed to produce a copy of a letter from which she read during her contribution to the CCJ debate. Last week, the suspension of the opposition senator was lifted, but her colleagues stayed away from the chamber demanding an apology from the Senate President, Floyd Morris. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell, and as we go, social media reactions to the Prime Minister's decision to strip Fenton Ferguson of the health portfolio and assign him labor and social security. <laughs>